Welcome. You are listening to a Rollmaster Classic actual play set in Terry K. Anther's excellent Shadow World using Fantasy Grounds. You can find session summaries, items and characters on Obsidian Portal where our campaign is called The Praise of Old Men. This episode is cross-referenced as Chapter 3, Demons of the Burning Night, Part 6. We're also on YouTube, Podbean and Twitch where you can find the various links as well as an index of some of the main points of each episode in the description. Last episode, the party finished off the deadly fast white and later found themselves up against a near unstoppable mummy-like creature. This episode sees the continuation of that fight. However, we were a bit short-handed this session, so we took temporary ownership of another character. Ugnan also took Numal, Silk ran Cran, and Cherry looked after Sharna too. Okay, so if you can recall, you can see on the map there that you'd roused in the um what looks like some sort of resting chamber there were five sarcophagi these ones are quite plain and relatively unadorned one of them the middle of the five the lid was slightly ajar and as you'd gone in uh, to the room and levered off that sarcophagus lid a mummy had um rather and horribly quickly risen and immediately um attacked and you're in the middle of now fighting that mummy. You'll also remember, um, Silk, so you're deeper in the main chamber where there's that rather more elaborate resting chamber. You'll remember that you'd uh, just listened for noises outside some of the southern doors and you'd heard some pounding and battering on the doors as if something was trying to get out and get at you. Anyway, right. l- leaving those doors alone quite wisely, you'd made your way to this northern door. So if we can have, please, uh, roll f- rolls for initiative from everybody, and we'll crack on. Yeah, okay, so Silk, it's your turn. So you can remember the, um, if you can remember, the mummy had been, I think, successfully hit by Cran last round. So the mummy is looking damaged. That is to say, there was a great puff of dust and cloud as Cran slammed his axe into the creature's upper torso but the creature is quite resistant to damage. Yeah, I think I remember that. Is there, if I move to uh, here, three squares beside the door, so I'm not in front of Ugnan, can I get, can I see still, or should I get right in there? Well, the door is open, uh, and the creature is uh, standing up right now in its sarcophagus, so you've got a good sight of it, so you don't have to move any further in. Just for being up on the top of the stairs there, that's cool. So uh, move three squares, and I believe I was chanting last turn, but I'll I'll make yeah, another probably. turn just so that I can yeah, cast fireball. One, fireball. One round had gone, so you probably would have been preparing for one round. But I'll, I'll gesticulate wildly, and I'll move the three yeah. squares to make it uh, 10%. Yep. Yeah. That's me. Okay. Uh, so, Numel, it's your turn. Oh, okay. <laughs> it might take a little while for my brain to click in. It's not the best of things. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking, I was thinking, why's my tone gone off? And then realised, oh yeah, because I'm Numel as well. Um, well, Numel's pretty close there. Uh, I think he's going to have to just keep going. Is the mummy attacking Cran or Numel? It swung out and lashed, uh, thumped Cran across the um, head. Didn't right. do too much damage because it hit something that's uh, not very vital. Okay, so he'll uh, try and hit this mummy with uh, the katana. I think that's the one with the the undead pluses. That's right. Ping. And um, that's four points of damage. Oh. So that just sneaked through and scraped across the creature's forearm as it was trying to probably um, hit out again at Cran. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you want to do anything else? No, because uh, I was thinking of using a, a holding song on this mummy, actually. But uh, it's probably going to take three rounds, and we'll see. No, I, he'll, he'll just stay with Crown. Okay. The creature who is probably about, you estimate to be about six feet tall or so, continues to try and smash away at Cran. I think it will try and do that. Uh, I've set 50% parry because he's using that remorse double scythe from last time. Is that okay? Um, if you yeah, if you want him to change weapons, he was using his axe, 
Oh, sorry, no, it's whatever he had. Yeah, so if yes, it's his exactly. battle axe, I'll change that to 50%. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so uh, the moment he tries to thump Cran across the head, uh, 10 points and an E unbalancing critical on Cran. Oh. That one slammed home. Okay, 50% parry. You need you need a one-handed weapon, buddy, so you can use all your parry next. Okay, so Cran uh, is knocked to the floor as the creature's uh, hand strikes him again across the head. Um, with his senses ringing, if he was wearing a helmet, his helmet's probably fallen off. He takes another 12 points of damage. He's stunned and unable to parry for the next round. Ooh. Uh, he might still pop a berry, but I don't... Yeah, so what do you Kranz... think? Because he'd, he'd have to parry at 50% of that. Um, actually, no parry, so yeah. He'll... Uh... You know what? He'll he'll just take it. He'll he'll take the 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 round this time, and that way he's good next round. Okay. So he'll be done. Okay. Uh, that means it's then Ugnan, your turn. Okay, Ugnan's gonna uh, doesn't really get in the way of. So, Sharna, does it look like she's gonna be able to attack? If yes, she can. Yes, yeah, she'll be able to attack from behind if she wants. At least get a flank attack. Okay, so I think what Ugnan will do then is he'll try and shift round behind, uh, just sorry, slightly ahead of Cran, just so that he he can be set up to try and get some kind of flank attack next round. Okay, yeah. So that sort of work. taking that side, that the thing, and I'd probably, it's 27, 27, 37, 42, he's nearly all his movements, so he'll just make sure he's got his hand axe sealed out, and that's his turn. Okay, all right. That's uh, Shana's, Shana's turn. turn. Okay, so Shana. Got her adrenal defense going. She uh going to go for a sweep because that's where her mastery lies. Okay, she's probably going to try and uh, buckle the creature's legs from behind. Yep. Well, that certainly uh, lands. Excellent. Uh, and can you roll? Yeah. Uh, Forty-two. Okay. I'm showing it the meaning of the life. Okay, so the creature is obviously um, driven slightly to one side. Um, it's struggling to get to its feet again, so its next attacks are going to be um, severely reduced. It's going to be at minus 10 for its attacks for the next round. Well, that's pretty good. Okay, but it's not stunned and it doesn't take any more damage. Cherry, not it's yet. your turn. Okay, Cherry steps up next to Shana. Does that give me a flank on this thing? Yes, that's fine. Because I need every bonus that I can get. The flank gives me plus 15, is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, and I'm going to have a go with the katana. Ooh, and fail. <laughs> uh, that manages to do five points of damage. So again, your katana <laughs> glistens slightly as it uh, hums through the air. And slashes yep. across the creature's uh, flank. Um, the creature turns to face you. You can see its eyes are glowing red amongst the bandages. Um, Ooh, it you're like next, that. Cherry. It didn't like that. Uh, can we have initiative rolls, please? No, you can't. <laughs> I refuse. If I don't go, it can't hit me. <laughs> I'm going to hide my eyes. Can't see it. It can't see me. Cran with another good roll. Good job, buddy. God damn it. Silk. Okay. Can you do a perception roll first, please? Um, oh. There is a tremendous crash behind you. Um, obviously, the door where the pounding was has splintered. Okay. What do you want to do? Oh, dear. I am going to move seven squares, but part of that, I'm going to make sure to close this door behind me. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's one, two to get in. Three, four, five, six. I'll lose my feet if you want me to close that door with the five foot and a move. It all depends. I mean, you're basically just slamming the door behind you rather than carefully closing it, aren't you? Well, I mean, if, yeah, I, how much for carefully closing just in case then? <laughs> uh, well, carefully closing it really is, it could be. Oh, I don't know, twenty percent of your activity. It's just slamming it okay. behind you. I think it's just five or ten. It, you, you're just moving in and kicking it behind I, you. I, you move in. I tell you what, I'll do it quietly, just so that they aren't aware of whoever busted through the door. You know that that we're inside this room until combat is uh, loud enough for them. 
So I'll do, do that gingerly. Yeah, I'll do that gingerly. So one, two, three, and twenty percent would get me there. Um, yeah. So I still that's still ten percent. So I'll just prep another round, unfortunately, but uh, that'll be me. Okay. Um, so that takes us to Ugnan. Okay, Ugnan goes. So what's going on? As he tries. Uh, it. Don't worry. Just just concentrate. I'll 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 stay here. Uh, yeah. Just just do do you. Okay, so I presume that's that looks like just a flank attack, so you're not a rear flank. Yes, no, it's a flank. Uh, no, that's actually a rear attack because focus carry. So that's actually a rear attack. Okay. Because the creature turned, if you recall, the creature has turned to uh, focus on Cherry because it's Cherry who did the last amount of damage. So I'll give you a rear attack on that. Oh, God. Oh. Five points, wherever it was. In fact, no, I haven't got the two handed thing, have I? And that's a miss. So your blow with your axe goes wildly wide. Too busy talking to the elf that he should be concentrating on his axe throw. Okay. Uh, um, let me see. So the creature this time, I think, will now have a go at uh, you, Cherry. Yep. So Cherry fearing, <laughs> fearing, <laughs> fearing, get, getting a little bit of the fear on from the eye looks looks from the eyes of this thing, puts all her strength into parry, okay. hopefully negating ridiculous amounts of damage. Right. You duck and roll with the blow and deflect much of what is um, a hideously powerful attack. Uh, you yeah, take yeah. five points of damage, but you're still standing, but you're aware of the awesome strength of this uh, evil creature. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> Shana. Shana's not happy that she's not the center of attention. So, she's... That would probably be true. Ooh. Now, why can't I roll this 95 for a crit? Lovely. Okay, so... The seven they, works well. The creature is smashed from behind as, as Shana attempts to buckle its legs. You can see that one of the creature's legs looks like it is close to actually detaching from the rest of the body. A few more good, solid blows will certainly put it down. Uh, right, so throws and a 77 on that. Okay, it looks like you've almost dislocated its hips or it's one of its uh, one of its uh, legs and clearly um, broken one of the hip sockets. Although the creature is summoned uh, or at least undead, the damage that you've done is significant and it's going to have a lot of difficulty turning and fighting. Um, Structural damage is the key, boys and girls. <laughs> Minus <laughs> to its attacks. Nice. That makes That's life a lot easier for everybody. Numal, your turn. Okay, so what was again? It was a uh, half that 31, 21, 41, take away 32. Okay. Oh, a bit higher this time. Right, this time the katana sneaks through the uh, creature's flailing guard and actually catches it across the abdomen. The blow is would normally be enough to probably disembowel a human. Obviously, this creature, or on this creature, just reveals another puff of sand again. But you've done a critical, so can you roll your critical, please? Um, looks like it's going to be a holy critical. So that's high open-ended, isn't it? Yeah. Not bad. 76. The blow catches the creature across the top part of the thigh, obviously focusing attempts or focus, focusing on that dislocated leg. You do another significantly heavy, uh, uh, significant blow to it. The leg almost detaches completely. The bandages across its, optimum, uh, across its abdomen open up completely, revealing what looks like pale, puckered flesh that is oozing and dripping sand into the sarcophagus. Another blow like that, and the creature is down. Um, it's almost out of action anyway with that dislocated leg and the other injuries that it's taken. Cran. One decent blow will probably be enough to finish it. Well, that's it. He he says, what, what? <laughs> and <laughs> runs around <laughs> and gets a rear flank if he just attacked Cherry. Yes, he did. And yes, he will get a rear flank. Okay, he grips his uh, battle axe with both hands, brings it overhead and chops down. Roar! And now i got to find the combat. You know, you're doing a better <laughs> job of being crammed than random. No, not at all. 
<laughs> Not at all. Uh, so jog 10 feet. Uh, okay, 11. So minus 11 plus 20. Here we go. Overhanded. Double bladed battle axe. Oh, and that's uh, zero. No parry. There we go. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> 94. That? Okay, sorry. The mummy is now extinct. Okay. That so one counts as silks. The, <laughs> so the blade cleaves through the creature's uh, head and buries itself almost all the way down to the hip, which is almost completely um, come apart from its body. The arms of the creature's flail in the air and then it just collapses in a heap of sand um can you all give me perception rolls please yeah you gotta you know what? yeah the first one is cherry's perception the second one shana's okay. perception yeah it's up to right, you a number of you can hear shuffling from the other side of the door as you quickly hush and you can see she'll probably step away from the door and point and put her finger to her lips yeah, exactly that. And she uh, kind of takes the stairs one at a time to get down by new. These are stairs that go down. Yes. So the yes, there are some steps which right. Sorry. Yes, uh, steps that Cherry has entered actually go slightly down, um, Silk rather than up. Right. Um, what, says uh, you can hear says creatures something. moving around on the other. I've I've got an enchantment that I'll be looking at. It's a little bit beyond me, but I probably could try it. It makes a big pit, giant barrier. I'm just thinking if it all goes badly and those things get through, as long as you lot don't mind standing with a shield on the other side of the barrier, they could fall down that little pit and then maybe you could just take them out with ranged weapons. That's smart. I have a firebolt ready to go, so uh, the longer I hold it, the better it'll get for accuracy. I'll uh, join these guys. Of course, it may not go right and my head might explode, but you never know. <laughs> Take your time. So, if I start making these noises, though, actually, I don't you need to be in. I just need to get past it. So, he's just going to start um, preparing barrier law. Okay. Um, so, you start preparing barrier law. The we are waiting for Ugnan to give you the signal that he's prepared his spell. Let's have a look. It's. Tenth level, we're seventh, so it's a difference of three. Oh, oh yeah, we went up a level. No, uh, not not until after. The, oh, I don't know. After this session, wasn't it? Oh, was it after this session? Okay. Yeah. So that means I'd have to roll thirty-three or more. So there's a one in three chance of this not going right. How long's the barrier there oh. for? The barrier is permanent though. So do you want to do that, or do we want to just this cr cluster around the um, kind of this area here? And, and sort of flank them and hit them as they come in. Yeah, I think that's best. Even if they have to jump it, we can push them in the pit okay. if it's one of those fast weights. Okay. So you're prepared to put a barrier um, in the form of a great deep pit in the floor. Is that right? Yeah, it's stone here, presumably. Yes, it is. Okay, so what it says here opens a pit uh, 500 cubic feet in stone. So that looks like a 10-foot corridor. So it could be 10 by 10 by 5. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that an undead's been able to jump 10 foot? So as we could jump 10 Could we jump 10 foot? We can, so yeah. They they probably can, but again, it'll be harder because we're all surrounded. I mean, a 10-foot jump is actually quite a big jump. So it could be a 10 by 10 and 5 foot deep. So 10 foot is a long jump, even for you guys. Okay, so how about that? How about maybe if, if I just move Kranich a second, sorry. Hold the line there with shields. We could put um, the barriers. I think the steps are going down, aren't they? Yeah. So you're at the top. Uh, sorry, you're at the bottom of the steps. Yes, yeah, so I suppose the one thing to think about is this is a permanent pit, so we need to get out again. But I suppose if we've got our own time, we can climb down five foot and back out five foot. It's just going to take a while. Yeah, exactly. All right, so what do you reckon? So just putting it just along that line where where Crown's standing, his character, and like a kind of shield line along. Okay. So your pit, do you want to draw roughly where you want your pit to be then, um, Ugnan? Sure. Silk jumps up on the, on the yeah. sarcophagus and just like Gimli <laughs> waves her our hands. Okay. What yeah. do you reckon to that? Sounds cool. Well, we can was, work out how yeah. to get out. 
Did you want to do something, Bosco, while I'm doing that? Yeah, I was... Uh, Jerry's going to have a look through the remains of the of the mummy and have a look in the sarcophagus real quick just to just to see if there's any okay uh cherry give me a perception roll please um i'm assuming you've got a light so give me a perception roll on the sarcophagus first please yeah sure um the sarcophagus is solid plain unadorned there are no hidden passages that's oh, sorry, hidden passages there are no hidden passages. <laughs> solid stone probably uh, carved out of a solid piece using something rather clever. So the, the, this isn't sort of fitted stone, this is solid stone. But you don't see anything hidden, anything magic or anything particularly valuable. Um, to really search the mummified body, you're going to have to kind of take some of the bandages off unless you want to just give it a very, very quick, easy check. I'll do a quick check. So it's just a straight percep uh, perception roll, please. Okay. Higher the better, you might find out something. True. Aha. Aha. So certainly, um, unlike the other, unlike the other remains that you've found, this is definitely human and not Amarishi. Okay. So these bodies, you suspect, certainly the one in this sarcophagus, the other sarcophagi are all um the lids are still intact they haven't been disturbed this one obviously if you remember the lid was slightly ajar um the body in this one and the mummy that lies now at rest is human not amarishi okay i got the some information glancing around the urns the urns and chests don't seem to carry anything valuable at all there is preservatives uh embalming tools and so on Right, Ugnan, give me your spell roll, please, to cast this uh, spell, which is higher than your casting level. Yep, so you might get that fumble table ready. Oh, I've got it. Okay, so it's got to be 33 or more. And it's not! No! Oh! No! <laughs> oh dear. So you're uh, gonna add on. Armor. You're gonna add on to this roll, unfortunately. 90. Please, dear God, roll low. How much am I adding on to it? 90. 90? Did so yeah. Did Silk say she was standing there? Because she this is a definitely is going to be dead. Fortunately, so if you want to make um, high open-ended, open-ended roll. No, no. Oh, oh good God. job. I thought that was OO for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully it's good because the there's a range in there, like an open-ender plus one to four or one to ten, and that can be even more deadly. So, right, the spell strays and travels to points unknown. Oh, it crap. proves useless. The caster is stunned for three rounds. Okay, so uh, just for a laugh, let's see where this spell would go. <laughs> um, that sounds um, awesome for a pit. Okay, so one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Okay, that's good. Uh, we'll roll a max. That, does that spell have a range? Uh, yeah, probably does. Let's have a look. Range 50 feet. Okay, so it's going to move 5d10 in a random direct, uh, sorry, in a random distance. There you go. I'm well, helping. as long as they make a, an orderly line, <laughs> we're set. <laughs> right, so you reel, your spell goes off, nothing happens in front of you, though the ground seems to shiver. And as you watch, you can see all the uh, floor, all the way up to the door, just shiver slightly as if something is moving through the stone. The door seems to heave and buckle slightly as the spell goes through it. But the door holds and is intact. Where and what happened to your spell, you don't know. But Ugnan then slumps to the ground, holding his head. about. It's like I was drinking something all over again. Oh, we bloody head. Okay. <laughs> it's like the Rook episode all over Yeah, I was going to say something about Rook. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, so, what now, folks? Other than once he comes round again, goes like, actually, once that pit's there, how are we going to open the bloody door? Why don't I just cast it on the other side of the door, so if they're all trying to batter it, it'll fall in the bloody pit, and then we could open the door and get at them. Well, do you want me to go up and have a look? Have a listen and see if I can hear how close they are. 
Oh, don't worry. I think if we yell and scream, they'll 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 come in. But I, I like staying in here because if we try to single file it at the door, um, we'll we'll be trapped or something. Yeah. No, I think we have them come in single file. It'd be the best. Yeah. All right. So you want the I, the pit still where I was going to try and go there originally? I think you're well, still let's, good. Let's yeah. open the door and then you prep the pit. Right. We'll go and open the door and come back. Pits down, then we start yelling and screaming. You're going to try it again? Yes, what could possibly go wrong? So while this happens, Cherry's, before before he casts, Cherry's going up saying, you dare cast it and leave me trapped on the other side with these. (laughs) Cherry's going to go up and open the door as quietly as she possibly can. Okay, give me, um, trying to open the door quietly, give me um, a hard stealth roll. Hard stealth. Yeah, these creatures will get a perception opportunity to try and listen to you. Okay. So you open the door and you can see on the other side, as you'll recall that the chamber on the other side of the door is illuminated. And you can see there are, in fact, three of these bandage wrapped figures in the room Uh, two are right by what looks like a great big pit that has appeared in the ground obviously Ugnan's spell manifested itself but not exactly where you wanted they're oblivious to your presence cherry the third deeper in the room is also moving around and every now and again he paused to almost sniff at the air none of the three have seen you i'm assuming you quietly close the door and retreat. I'm actually leaving the door open and retreat. Okay, so you leave the door open and retreat. Yeah. Let's so I want to get back behind Cran as quick, quickly okay. and quietly as possible. All right, you're preparing your spell, aren't you, Ugnan? Yeah, I'm, I'm ready to go whenever I get the nod. Okay, yep. So, so as soon as I'm goes, the... how how many rounds does it take you to prepare that spell? Uh, three altogether. Two rounds prep, one round to cast. Okay, so one round has gone. They haven't noticed. The second round goes, and they still haven't noticed. These creatures are now staring at the pit. One of them is sort of leaning over and flailing his arms at the pit. And by the third round, they still haven't noticed that the door is open. So three rounds have gone. Do you want to cast your spell, uh, Ugnan? Yeah, okay. I I think I've got... May as well shelter... I think I've got it this time. Oh no, but not shout anything in case it um goes wrong again. I mean, not that not that it will. So ah. Thirty-two or more. Thirty-two. I take a step over towards wow. Cherry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so you cast your spell. It does indeed work. Okay. Where do you want to position this second one? Was well, that that's where you wanted it, wasn't it? I think originally. Yeah. There. Yeah. Okay. So you create your spell. Um, there's a greater chance that they'll be aware of this because they're sensitive or slightly more sensitive to magic. Uh, oh, no, I'll they still haven't some. noticed it. They don't notice the spell. And they're kind of moving around trying to check what pit. One of them goes over the door. Can you give me a perception roll, Cran and Numel, please? You're probably able to see what happens. Uh, hidden or just out in the open? Um, out in the open. Both of you can see that as the, you'll remember that that double door has a warding sign on it which hasn't been damaged. And as the mummy gets to that warding sign, the door seems to flare with light, sparks leap off the door, and the mummy reels back, unable to touch the door. That oh. draws the attention of the other three, of the other two creatures. No. And they gather near the door. And then all three back away. It's too bad we couldn't get there and just do ranged attacks. Yeah, but we, we've even really, still, we've really got to learn how to do that. That um, sign, that rune. Yeah, it's amazing and perfectly. As okay, you... Uh, do we want Cran to launch a arrow as far as he can into the room? Just or just... well, the doors. I think is just is it a jar? Yeah, the door is open. So Cherry opened the door quietly, pulled the door open. Oh, right. You've now got two pits. 
the creatures really haven't noticed the door being opened. You've remained quiet so far, so they're unaware of your presence. Uh, Cherry, um, you're good at bow. Numel's not too bad, and Cran can have a go. So I suppose we could all fire on something. Yeah, yeah. No, yep. no initiative rolls needed. If you just target and go, I'll resolve all these. How about um, the one in the middle of those mummies? That's probably the one we could all see. Yep. I got the middle one targeted there for you. 63 feet away, so no bonus. Ah, okay. Um, so that's mummy ID 1 or ID 2, ID 3? Let's go ID 2. Okay. I've got a target. Okay. So Dang. there's a silent count of 1, 2, then Cran loses count and fires. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> yep. One too many. Yeah. Thank okay. you. All right, so, so let's do Clan oh, missile pen. first. Yeah, well, why have you got a missile pen? Okay. It's well, his full plate. He's a walking yeah. tin right. can. Cran yeah. misses. Cherry also misses. The two arrows fly into the room and go wide. Is there anybody else? Yeah, Numel. Numel, Numel goes, see if he can do any better. In his, he's, he's a water elf, isn't he? Yep. You will have all missed. I shall share it with you. Nice. <laughs> I, did that the other, I did that the other day while we were in underwater adventures in another RM game. <laughs> <laughs> well, that works. Whatever happened, it worked. So uh, uh, you hit. Um, which mummy did you hit? ID number uh, two. Two. There we go. So the arrow strikes the mummy, and all three turn and come lumbering towards you. I say lumbering, they pick up speed as they approach. Um, there's three coming towards you. Can I have initiative, please, from all of you? Okay. Um, I was going to say Shana can use her chakram or whatever it is. She can, yeah. I've got that sorted out now, I think. It was my fault. Okay, there's Cran. Oh, there we go. Cran's got good in it. Good job. Well, if it's round one, when they close, he gets plus 20, when I remember. Okay, Silk, it's you to go first. Okay, so Silk is going to hold her action to shoot until they're at the other side of the pit, and then she'll release it. Uh, that's her. Done. Okay. Ugnan. Ugnan will just start prepping a... Sh oh, I don't know, this might be a bit overkill, actually. Um, oh, I wish I knew what I was going to... Okay, I'm going to prep Shock Bolt, but I'm probably not going to use it. Okay. Yeah, you don't lose any power points if you then cancel it. Yeah, so that's um, it. Right, the mummy okay, comes to the door and then halts at the pit, waving its arms at you. It's clearly not stupid, and it realises that if it gets into the pit, it's going to have trouble getting out. So it freezes, not really sure what to do. Numel, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> if you keep hitting doing that we're going to have to make yarn do <laughs> well it's a minus 10 this time because um it's canon now <laughs> because um he's short bow isn't i was it? So just gonna say good roll okay and again the arrow thumped into the chest of that first mummy that numel hit first time there are two of these arrows now sticking out of the creature's body looks down at the arrows and just brushes at them, snapping the shafts, but otherwise doesn't seem too badly affected. Now I you shall fear the water elves. <laughs> <laughs> or not. Shana. <laughs> Give me a sec. Okay. Oh, good. He's nice and close. Mummy to Chakram in the hallway. I wing Cluedo. That's right, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Professor Plum with the lead piping in the yep. sarcophagus. Uh, so that chakram whips through the air. I'm glad that worked. Craig might like me now. Uh, it whips through the air and again smashes into uh, the mummy. Um, again, there's that telltale puff of sand. Bandages are ripped apart and begin to unravel. The creature takes a step back but then steps back up to the hole again and actually jumps in. Pop. Oh, he's going to try and climb out the, the other side. Yeah, he's going to try and climb out at you. Fran. How, how deep is the hole? 
Ten feet, I think you said? No. Five feet? No, five feet. It's ten by ten by five. Five feet. So it's going to slow it down, but it won't stop it climbing out. But you will. Um, I'll give you, if it's trying to climb out when you attack it, I'll give you a attack bonus. Cool. Okay, Cran is going to drop the heart bow behind him and pull out his uh, pull out his magic battle axe again. Okay, so he'll pull out the yeah. shield of faith and uh, make sure it's targeted at mummy too, or this mummy, yeah. And uh, that's that's him. He'll full full parry. Okay, so what will that creature do? I think he'll come across to there and also jump into the pit. Actually, no, he won't. He'll hesitate. They're not the fastest of creatures. And Mummy 4 similarly will come across uh, and then stop in surprise at the pit and not do anything else. Cherry, it's your turn. Okay, so Cherry will um, try and weaken the ones at the rear guard because the other ones just dropped down and out of sight for her. She's standing on on the unbroken bit of the sarcophagus up back there to get height. Ooh. Uh, mummy number four? Yes? Yep. So your arrow uh, flies home and catches the creature in the upper. It looks at the arrow in disdain. Uh, no mean feat if you've got your face completely covered. And snaps the arrow shaft off. Otherwise, though, the arrow doesn't seem to have done anything. Disappointing, because you're aware, Cherry, that if that had been a flesh and blood creature, you probably could have uh, nicked a large artery. Yeah. Um, so basically, you would have done a critical, but uh, you didn't. Okay, cool. initiative rolls, please, folks. Okay, uh, Ch Silk is going to launch her firebolt at the uh, the one on the left. Okay, so this. yes, because that was a readied action. Yep, so yeah, yeah. Before you roll your initiative. Oh, hang on. Let me let me roll initiative in the right people first, because I. Yeah, all right. I just rolled a four for Sharna, and she'd be disgusted. Oh, six. <laughs> Sharna, 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 Sharna mentions that. that if you do the Xena War Cry when you launch a Chakram, you get bonus. No, no, Is Craig. It? I don't think Craig would like that. And this is, and he'll hear, <laughs> and he'll know. <laughs> Uh, but then again, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't see Shana as that sort of character. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I don't see Jan liking blah, 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 either, to be fair. <laughs> no, no, he <laughs> definitely won't like that. It, I'll give you a bonus experience. Oh, oh yeah, see, now characters. you get both. <laughs> okay, so here's the fire yeah, bolt, do you, do you on, bolt on this. Come on, big. Oh, almost. 145. So 30, max 30 for the prep rounds, and then yeah. plus 5 okay, for the so helmet. What was that? Was that Mummy 2 that you hit? No, it's Mummy 3. Sorry. I can mummy see 3, yeah. Being yeah. Not very bright. Okay. Uh, so can you roll uh, your D critical, please? Oh, 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 heat. Here we go. Flame on. Oh, 0 4. <laughs> okay. So your firebolt glances probably off the side of the pit. Uh, there's a great burst of fire and orange light. And the creature steps back and avoids the worst of it. And you do another four points of damage. Man. Close. Back to shock bolts. <laughs> Close, but not quite. That could have been nasty. Anybody need a light? As she turns on her cigarette lighter finger. I think uh, right. It, can it, I have some initiative rolls? All right. Okay. Man. Okay. Good job, uh, so, still bites her lip as the flame doesn't quite do as much damage as she hoped. Do you want to prep again? Yeah, she'll prep a uh, shock bolt this time, just one round, and then she'll launch next Good round. Good old down. faithful. Yep. Goodbye, noses. <laughs> Numel, your turn. Okay, so Numel's got a spell here, um, which is under controlling song. It's a level two spell holding song which will hold him to 25% activity. So he's going to start prepping that. Um, it's a song, though, okay. so he's going to sing in his... What should I do? I'm looking forward to this. What should I do? It'll keep on going. Prepping. Is that it? Is that the best you can do? Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so you're going to sing It's his first round of prep. It gets better. Well, I suppose so, yes. He needs a bit nervous of performing in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only it. song I can remember. We've never seen him cast before, I don't think. No. No. 
Okay, so mummy number three has been uh, burnt and uh, and missed. He hurls himself into the pit, and as he collapses to his hands and knees in the pit, rather than getting up and walking across to the other side, he almost uh, gallops across the floor on all fours, desperate to get up and at you, Silk. Uh, oh, he likes me. It's probably personal since you tried to set fire to him. Fire. Cran, your turn. Okay, Cran grips his axe. He's done parrying last round. He's going to whack a Mummy 3 over the top. Yeah, Mummy 3 is in reach, and you'll get a rear attack on significant advantage in height, and the creature can't really defend himself very well. Oh, very cool. Rear attack. Here we go. Come on, buddy. Do it, do it. Overhand chop. That was zero. Sorry, I've got all these extra parries. Okay, zero. Done. Launching fighters now. Oh, no. That's not a fumble, I don't. No, it's not. Um, but with those bonuses coming through, that's ridiculous. Oh, that's uh, true. <laughs> yeah, with all of the bonuses coming through, actually, your axe, even with a roll of eight, manages to do a 32 ES. Oh, my gosh. So that's not Grand. quite an E slash. So it certainly smashes home. Oh, so is I that can't... open-ended or just die 100? It's basically just a D100, but we just reduced because the it's just um, I just reduced the critical on it. So let me just roll up that slash critical slash. There you go. So yeah, if you want to roll that slash critical, please. It's just a regular 40. D100. 45. Got it. Yeah. Uh, so that'd be an E. That'd be a D and a 45. Okay, that's another three hits. You've basically taken off a large chunk of the creature's shoulder as you've hammer down with your axe it glances off the creature's head takes off probably the left hand side of its face and carries on through the shoulder taking off the left shoulder blade but the creature is still standing somehow die you bloody and it's fiend mummy number two meanwhile comes across and begins to pull itself up and out it will be out next round Unless you can knock it back in. So basically, if you could do a stun, it won't be stunned, but it will be knocked back into the pit. Okay, Shana, off you go. There's your cue. If you can get a deliver a stun to this, I was going to say, it back into the pit. Shana goes, you're not coming up here, mate. 190. Okay, and that is indeed enough. Um, I think, let me just check, I've got the right one. Um, 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 martial art throws. Okay, can you. Critical, please, at D100. Oh, damn. Okay, that's enough to knock it back into the pit. It doesn't really do really? much damage. No. But you did what you had to. Playing okay. forcey back through to my feet. All right. Mummy number four jumps into the pit as well and comes across, unable to get out because its other companions are in the way. Ugnan, your turn. Going to prep again for the second round uh, though I did say originally it was going to be shock bolt and I've changed my mind so this is probably resets it I don't know how prep works yeah, I think so. so prepping barrier oh. law instead oh not another pit uh oh okay so you're prepping and that means cherry it's your turn she grabs a flask of um, holy oil from her, from her belt yeah and she's going to she was planning to Pour it on like 10 arrows or something like that. Pour it over the top right. of 10 arrows to use and shoot. But seeing that they're all bundled nicely in like five foot radius style thing, she yep. goes, well, I've got a second one just in case. She's going to throw one vial and hopefully smash it in on the mummy's merry effect. Now, um, I know it's an improvised weapon. Yeah. So that's my minus 15, isn't it? Um. Or, not for throwing, it's not, not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, yeah, minus 15 for improvised because you're trying to get this blast to land in a particular area. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just trying to work out. I don't have improvised weapon as a thing on the combat tracker. But just give me an, a, a strength agility roll as a throw yeah. roll and okay. then just take 10 off it. That will do because we'll, we'll buck in the back out whether it's or not. Because you're, you're trying, you're not trying to strike a mummy, are you? You're trying to strike the floor that they're surrounding near. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I'm, no, I'll, I'll try and I want to, I want to get maximum splash. So really, I want to bounce it off Cran's head. <laughs> so it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
mind your head. Uh, mind your head. There you go. We'll do it. Uh, okay, so 54. That's... Okay, so where are you aiming the uh, flask for? Are you aiming to hit a mummy or something else? The floor in front of them because they're coming up out of the pit. So, so or the roof above the... to let it rain down on them. All right, yeah. So you're throwing the flask 20 feet. Um, that's not too far. 54 is probably just about because uh, you'd have a bonus to that as well. Oh, you said hard, yeah. Okay, yeah, yep, so that's that's good enough. So the, uh, the flask itself, therefore, will hit probably mummy two and mummy four with holy water. Um, so that's going to burn them as if it was acid. So can you give me, um, gosh, there's no, I don't think there's an acid critical, is there? Roll Master Companion three. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which fortunately I have had time to put in tables. Yeah, no, don't worry. <laughs> you read I'm my just mind, saying, you The pass. GM in me automatically goes to where it is. Do you know, um, I'm, I'm impressed that you know that, but it's also quite sad that you know that at the same time. <laughs> no, RM2 is the best version, baby. <laughs> no. Okay, um, give me... Only critical? I'm just looking for a critical role uh, just to do some damage. Why don't we do it as a... Do we have a holy still. criticals or not? No, let's do let's just do an A heat critical. Okay. So I won't double the damage. Okay. And this will be the same for both of them. Yep. Um so burns um another seven hits on both. So the acid hits two and four, and they'll take seven hits, and I think they'll take probably seven hits next round, and then it'll start halving. Yep. Sounds I great. Think that, I think that mm, that's about damage over time. Sounds good. Yeah, I think it's a damage over time. Is as the holy water through them. Initiative rolls, please, folks. Now remember, none of the mummies are able to climb out yet, but obviously they're going to try and do so desperately. Silk, you're up. Okay, so she prepped last round. Yeah. Uh, can she see any of them through Cran, or are they now five feet? No, I th I think you can. Pro uh, no, I think it's very good. If you've got a shock bolt, um, since you're firing past somebody, because they're so close, I think I'm going to have to make that an extremely hard, um, if you can take a minus 30 to your attack roll. Yeah, I think there's like partial cover and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay, element and partial, minus 30, partial cover, there you yeah. go. Okay, done. And she's going to target number three then, where she originally... Yep. And that's still not close enough. She's going to move part of her movement uh, to get behind Cran and yep. inch in there and just basically finger wag in front of Cran, pointing down. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> oh. Oh, that's not bad. That's nine. And an A electricity critical. Oh, snuck one in. Yeah, so I'll allow that critical because it's magic and it's elect well. So, yep, normal, normal critical. Cool. Open ended. <laughs> sorry, um, just D100, sorry. Okay. Oh, 61. Oh, 61. Not too bad. Stay in there. So, your uh, bolt of uh, white lightning thumps into the chest of the creature. Um, and knocks it back. Basically, if you've got a stun on it, though you can't stun these creatures, you'll certainly knock them back. So okay. I'll take those off. And basically, it's knocked back slightly. Lightning. <laughs> Your turn. Okay, so this is the uh, second round of prep. Okay. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. <laughs> So Mummy 2, it holds feet, ignores your attacks, and begins to lift himself up. You can hear him hissing at you. And worryingly, can I have Cran and Shana make perception rolls, please? As the creature hisses, some fluid drips from between the creature's open mouth and bandages. Ew. And whatever is leaking out is black viscous and unpleasant looking in fact as the black stuff hits the ground you can see tiny little maggots appear oh it had to be maggots <laughs> uh okay so that was mummy two 
mummy three returns and he's going to try and pull himself next round in fact he's actually uh, yeah he's going to start pulling himself out as well uh Ugnan, it's your turn so mummy two has got his knees up on the edge of your pit so to knock him back into the pit you need to deliver a stun to him otherwise he's going to be out next round okay so similarly mummy three so this is only the second round of prep so it really needs to go next round um so i need to roll quite high on the on the init or i just run or I do, I, i'm gonna risk it i'm gonna just do this the another round of prep and hope that i can okay. outdo them in it next round okay cherry it's your turn you can see two of these mummies are trying to lift themselves up the pit uh the one okay. in between cran and shana is almost out okay He's just get so, his legs underneath him i'm going to take the other vial of um holy oil and do what i originally intended and pour over the actually no no i won't bugger that since he's hopping out i'm going to move forward to there close off his space and hit him with a katana yep nice no, i mean too so a out. stun from that holy weapon will knock him back into the pit oh if let... he fails on any sort of dexterity oh, roll and um... these guys are clumsy so, wish me luck. Good luck. Uh, damn items I can't miss. use. Meanwhile, the other mummy comes across and takes the place of the other, which unfortunately means that mummy cannot be knocked back into the pit easily unless you deliver a critical that's uh, quite significant. Q Shana. Q Shana, exactly. Go big. 191. Done. So that's uh, on number two. Uh, do do yeah, I want to kick him so hard that he knocks his mate in the next week. Okay. So that's a D critical, please. You want high yeah. on this one to try and knock him oh, ass over the tip. Far out. And far out. that's probably Where's my fate points when I need a reroll. Do it. <laughs> no. No. no, it does four more points of damage. The preacher rocks back, but he falls almost onto the head of me number four and therefore stands up in between okay. all four of you. He's out of the pit and will be God. able to fight next round. Yeah. God damn it. And if he flails, he's going to hit a number of you. Fran, it's your turn. You cannot knock Mummy 2 back into the pit. You could knock Mummy 3 back into the pit, or you could get an attack on Mummy 4 with a height advantage. Yeah, he's going to whirl around with his axe on Mummy 2. He sees all the squishies behind there, and uh, hopefully we can keep 3 and 4 back there. So, right, no, Mummy 2. two with, are you attacking this with one hand? Or... Uh, this is two hands, because he had the short right. the bow out. Right, so. two hands. You're in very, very confined silk right next to you. Shana right next to you. I want you to take a minus 20 penalty to your attack because you've got to be okay. very, very careful and precise with your swings. He's got no problems with a minus 20. He's like, ah, oh, it's like I've got a hangnail. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your heart out, John. It's uncanny. <laughs> uncanny. <somewhere>. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so minus 20, uh, rear yeah. flank at yes, all? Yes, yes, I'll give you now. I'll give you rear Okay, that'll kind of get rid of minus, so minus 20 plus 25. Okay, so he is swinging away. Come on, swing for the fence. Get him, get him, all of them. Oh, low roll. Still good enough. So your axe buries, or Cran's axe, sorry, buries itself in the rear of mummy number two. The There's... big man tries to heft him in the air with the with the weight of the swing. Okay. Uh, so oh, nope. Uh, D 25. slash. Which becomes a B slash Ooh. only does a small amount of extra damage. So you kind of rock the creature slightly forwards at Cherry, but do little else. Oops, sorry, I better move you back on one. Uh, right, and that's the initiative rolls, please, everybody. Oh, I better put a bit more damage on number two. Oh, crap, two threes. I need to be higher than that. Oh, come on, Numal. So, Silk, I think you've spent some time prepping, so there's a mummy right in your face. 
Yeah, she's gonna back up five feet and uh, give some some precious room to him. Okay, launch shock bolt. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, two hundred nine. Nice so that's a fourteen points of damage. Oops, let me uh, pass fourteen points of damage on that one. And you've rolled a B electricity critical, which is not modified because it's electricity. Off you go. Oh, good. 79. Come on, nose. <laughs> oh, no, sadly. It was close. It was close. So, chest rock. Bow is knocked down. So, the uh, blow to the creature's back probably knocks it down to its knees, just to the left of Cherry. And it takes 11 hits. It obviously, can't bleed, but you can see the bandages are crisp and blackening. Uh, around it. And Come on, fact, Shana. 11 points of damage actually collapses it to the ground. It doesn't oh. look like it's going to move. Oh. Down Kill. It goes. Kill sheet. Down it goes, unable to move. Shana, your turn. Right, number four I... is looks like it's trying to lever itself up out of the pit. Oh, well, that, we, we can't have that. I'm sorry. That's Try again and hopefully. Oh, God. Fumble. Fumble for a swing. Oh, no. Oh, oh this no. Is one that definitely goes on obsidian. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. Okay. Does uh, she actually get a fumble for a swing? Yeah, one to yeah, two. Yeah, you yeah. must do. So, yeah. um, of all the numbers with that bonus, too. Okay. Uh, so, it's all off you go. Give me uh, your fumble, please. Oh, please roll over. Okay, ill-timed sweep results in your attempt to trip the ground. This stuns you for two rounds. Oh, look. So as you leap forward, actually, you twist on your ankle and um, in pain, uh, Shani yelps and retreats. Uh, so that should be two, two rounds of stun. Now, she has something that removes stun, doesn't she? Right. Yeah, those berries. Unfortunately, that means, though, that mummy number four can now step, pull itself up and stand up. Cran. Oh, just in time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cran, again, baseball swing. Here we go. Uh, same kind of thing, minus 20 plus 25? Yeah, yep, okay. I think so. Uh, yes, because you've got Shana and Numel near you. Okay, yep. so plus 20 or minus 20 and plus 25. Here we go. Come on. Come on, take his head. Oh, thank God he's got a huge bonus for attack. Okay. Way so, to go, uh, Wow, it's really horrible. So that's 45 points. Oh, <laughs> nice. Um, and that's going to be a D critical, please. So uh, uh, arms law slash D critical, okay. please. I'm darkening this. Uh, to be a little bit darker, so we should have better salmon. This is fighting salmon, this color, for Krant. <laughs> oh! Fighting salmon. Yeah, that's the color. <laughs> You're not an interior <laughs> decorator by any chance, are you? <laughs> not at all. You don't do feng shui or anything? Not at okay. all. <laughs> uh, strike to the foes lower back. Um, so that's another four hit points. So the creature is rocked forward at you again, Cherry. Obviously, Cran quite is getting into the, if you'll pardon the pun, the swing of this. Oh. Um, and smashes the character forward again. Um, unfortunately, these things don't stun. They've got no nervous system. Numel, it's your turn. Number three is picking himself out. You need to do a really heavy hit, i.e. get more than two stuns to knock him back into the pit. Yeah, if you want to make the attack, but you're casting a spell on. That's okay. right. So he's going to cast um, hold, which holds it to twenty five percent of its action, which hopefully will be enough to keep it in place. Hopefully, yeah. So if it you works, want to give me a roll just to not fumble it, and then we'll. Have... Ooh. And he's doing okay. flamboyant gestures. Don't know what flamboyant gestures okay. and elvish is. <laughs> 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 Uh, right, I'll just see that we share respect fellow players. <laughs> yeah, poor Jen. Uh, yes, so it gets to make a resistance. I got very confused with strange noises. 
Uh, okay. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. It seems to freeze in place, and you can see its limbs quiver. It's in sort of a half standing, half kneeling position. Whatever that, whatever Numel has done, whatever strange magic he's cast, um, you're hoping it's strange magic, unless he's gone completely bonkers to talk like <laughs> that. Um, the creature is unable to move. Uh, mummy number three, therefore, is unable to move. It kind of lurches slightly to the side, but that's all it can do. Ugnan, it's your turn. Okay, so finally it has the, the barrier up. So he shoots his, shoots his arm forward and starts to gather uh, a load of earth from the pit below. And it starts to gather on the top of the the roof just above the pit to make a earth wall, which he's going to try and summon and just let go so it just falls down on top of the pit and hopefully takes um, Mummy 3 with it. Okay, so cast your spell, make sure you don't fumble it, and then we'll see if we can roll a crush critical or something as you drop an earth wall on this creature. Yeah, I'll put the flamboyant stuff in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, beauty. Let's see, earth wall. Have you got any information about what's critical? The earth wall's not falling from a great height. Um... Let's Big call impact. it. So he's not going to make it the full 10 by 10, by the way. He's going to make it slightly, yeah, slightly, slightly less. If it's, yeah, if it's not falling by that match, yeah, rather than a crush, it's probably because it's earth, isn't it? Not stone. Yeah, so I'm not really too worried about doing the kind of um, uh, crushing it. Okay. Let's it's, it's more trying to drop the earth wall directly on top of it so it sort of put, pins it underneath there. So it'll take a while for it to get out of that pit. Okay, uh, let's it, go it, for. It says it's three foot at base, one foot at top. Give me an A. Give me an A crush critic on this because it's going to you're going to do some damage on it. Yes, ninety five. Mm. Oh okay. wow! Uh, you'll like this one, Silk. Break the foe's nose. Yeah. So we're stunned and unable to parry for three rounds. All right. So basically, fifteen hits, and what that will do is just not because you've done three hits it will carry the creature back into the pit, which is what you were really looking for. Yep, absolutely. Um, right, so that's uh, 15 hits. There you go. Ugland's pleased. Way to go, buddy. Yeah, you high five you, Irrefine. <laughs> okay. And then, Cherry, it's your turn. Okay. Since I let one through the back ranks, I'd better have a go with my katana. Yay, I hit 100. That's my first roll for Cherry. That's hit 100, <laughs> even though it's a shana. Okay, um, so which one was that? That's uh, on number, number four. Four, yeah. Okay, so that's nine points of damage. So it's still standing, just. So do I have to do a critical for the... For the... For the holy effect, yes. Holy effect, right. Yeah, yeah. Copy that. You get, basically, you've got a bonus to your attack roll because it's a holy weapon. But then in terms yeah. of the extra damage, that's when you're looking to get a critical roll, I'm afraid. I think we're looking for initiative rolls, please. That barrier law, um, that particular earth wall, uh, Stuart will take 10 man yeah. rounds at the thin end to dug out of. Okay. Is it going to fill that pit or does that, or does that yeah. earth wall that's now collapsed then seal you in? I'm hoping what it does is well, it's only, um, hang on, I'll give you the exact dimension. Is it the same dimensions as the pit? Oh, no, not at all. It is 10 by 10 by, um, sorry, it's up to 10 by 10, and then three foot at the base, one foot at the top, so you can dig through it in 10 man rounds at the top, but it was going to make it slightly smaller so it would just fall down the pit. So it's sort of okay. like crush it, not crush it, but you know, just mean it'll have to okay, try so and dig its way out. So it's probably buried, if it's loose soil, uh, it's probably bot buried up to its hips. Yeah, it's like and a pack. It's like it's, it's, it's an earth wall, so it is packed. But it, you know, this oh, right, this thing okay. I presume has got a good bit of strength, so it'll just dig its way through. In ten rounds, it'll be out. Okay. Or yep. unless unless you think it can just lift itself, lift the wall up, in which case obviously it'll be out sooner. Um, it's not quite that strong, so no, I don't think it. Okay. Uh, Silk, it's your turn. Okay, prepping my last shock bolt, and then I've got to start using pearls. Done. Okay. Right, that creature. Is going to attack you, Cherry, since it's right on top of you, I'm afraid. Give me a sec. I, I forgot I was going to put parry. Okay, do you want to put some parry on? Yeah, yes, please. Okay, I'm, yeah. I'm set. We'll soon find out. <laughs> okay. As defensive as I get. Don't kill me yet. 
I uh, may need a vet. That is <laughs> 13 points and a C. Uh, unbalancing critical. Oh, unbalanced. Disarm stun for six rounds. Oh, okay. Now that's fine. Ah, I can take it. As, as oh, Terry no. falls flat on her back, she goes, I know your type. <laughs> <laughs> Shana, your turn. You can get a, a rear attack on the mummy that just flattened uh, Cherry, if you wish. I'm sure you'll take, unless you want to tap him on the shoulder and say, try it with me, big boy. Oh, Shana, did you say? Okay. Yeah, it's Shana. Uh, okay, so Shana's got to take a wee wall, so she's unstunned. Oh, she's stunned, isn't she? Yeah, so she's got to take... Yeah, some... yeah, yeah, she's taken a wee wall. Oh, where'd it go? Moved it now. Uh, well wall or whatever it is. Let me yeah. see what the addiction factor is. So she can oh, yes, it. please. That was so good to tell Craig. He was stunned, fumbled in okay. an attack, and is now addicted. <laughs> Actually, please, 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 please. Matt, can you can you find what well wall addiction factor is? It's not in the. Oh, that's right. Blame somebody three. else. I have three. Three. three? Yeah. What are you yeah. asking me for? I'm not the healer. <laughs> oh, Eleven. <laughs> Eleven. Thank you, Logan. Eleven. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so Shana's fine. Oh, Damn it. Shana's fine and ready to give mummy number four. Oh, the stun's still in effect, so add 50 to that, please. Yeah, so that's going to be off the table anyway. So that's going to be, uh, again, um, a 10. Yeah, I want a martial arts throw critical, so that's going to be C, yeah, C critical, please. Big, big, big. Oh, good, good. 52. Uh, so another six hits of damage. Uh, the creature is barely standing. Not Can I use feet. the throw to clear it away from Terry? No, because you didn't do a stun on it. So right. it's on top oh. of you. And remember, this is... Oh, that was the other creature that was uh, dribbling that foul black stuff. That was an important one to kill. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this one is just a regular mummy. Thank you, Shana. And uh, Numel, it's your turn. Okay, so Numel, I think, shot a short, short bow, never actually changed or anything else, so... No, so uh, he's still got his short bow out, and he cast a spell. Shoot. Yep, so he's going to stop doing that spell, and then try and shoot Mummy for... Cleric <laughs> this. Don't know why I talk like this, I'm not even under the water. I <laughs> know. Um... That arrow flies home, catches the creature in the base of the skull. Um, it half turns, but doesn't complete the action before it collapses to, its, to the ground and falls face down on the ground at the base of Cherry. There we go. Down it goes. One left. Excellent. We've got ten rounds before this thing gets out, or so we can prep. And that's what usually happens with your type. <laughs> <laughs> Before she lapses back they, into all. Oh, finally, hurts. they finally get me on my back, yeah. <laughs> and then they collapse unconscious. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I don't know what I was thinking, but I wasn't thinking like that. You Australians, what you do on a Saturday night? Okay. <laughs> uh, well, that's my visa burnt. Cran, it's your turn. Um, Mummy three is trying to dig himself out. Any attack you make is going to be obviously with the rear attack bonus. Oh, Cran flips his uh, his heavy axe in one hand to the other and back again and hefts it high and brings it down low on the moment. Crack! Ooh. 83, 249. Okay, so that's a uh, base of 46 points of damage. Uh, the axe takes the creature's head off and it ceases to move. The head rolls across the earth and falls into the corner of the pit. They're all gone. It's, it's all in the wrists. <laughs> you worried about um, hitting into the pearl there, uh, Matt. I, I'm, I'm 27 power points into my pearl. Oh, no kidding. Okay, I don't feel so bad then. <laughs> okay. Right, so let me clear all of those stuns on you because those will probably clear as you sort yourselves out. Uh, none of you should be stunned now. None of the mummies are moving. Can you all 
Give me perception rolls, please. So the mummies look as if they are motionless, but you can see, looking at them carefully, some of them are twitching slightly, and uh, you can see some of the bandages beginning to twitch and start wrapping themselves up. Oh, yeah. stupid roll master and dead. <laughs> uh, I um, I'm going to grab that last vial that I was going to use before of yep. uh, holy water and pour it on, pour a little as, on each of them. As you pour that holy water on, you can see just like acid in it, it burns through them, and you can see in a couple of places that the holy water burns through to the stone, but then has no other effect. You're going to have to think of some other way of destroying these. You've now got uh, four mummies around you in this room and in that pit. Um, and they're beginning to slowly form themselves back together again. Mad, uh, I, yeah, I turn to Silk and say, I think you need to set these on fire. Yeah, you're probably right. Release, I'll, your, uh, in, release your inner pyromania. <laughs> uh, I can't hold on to it anymore! <laughs> burn, baby, burn! Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can set fire to them with a torch and oil. And as they burn, you can see the limbs um, begin to twitch and quiver and shake as if they're trying to thrash and resist the fire that consumes them. Um, they're so dry, withered and ancient that the bandages go up almost instantly as if they're made of oil and the flesh itself is quickly consumed by the fire. Within five or, five or ten foul minutes of smoke and fume, the mummies are burnt to ashes. Well, that just goes to prove if you're old enough to be a mummy, you, you're too old to understand. Stop, drop, and roll. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say. Thank God, I thought you say, um, always burn your mummies. <laughs> no. We've now learned oh, that. I'll save that for Mother's Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What are those okay, candles um... for? <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, <laughs> so the room itself, you know, has one side open. The other four, the lids are still closed. Um, the mummies are still burning. The smell is beginning to filter away. Uh, you can't hear any other noise. The crypts are quiet. Glancing through the door, you can see that the creatures battered their way through the southwestern door of this large chamber. And you see a little way into, oops, let me just uh, reveal some of the mask. Uh, mask edit. You can see into one of the corridors down there, some steps leading down. And there looks like an alcove of some description. And you'll recall that that, uh, yes, there's an arrow there. Thank you very much. The warding signs on that were damaged, just like the warding signs on the door that you've just opened. So what do you want to do now, folks? You can, uh, the, the magicians know that it expended a lot of energy and are probably feeling tired, but you have, of course, just defeated four formidable foes with relative ease. Do you want to carry on exploring or do you want to pause and regather your senses and energy before you explore more of these doors? Ugden's kind of like, I, I, as you know, I, I don't like to complain. Which is a blatant lie. Um, but, um, <laughs> I'm a feeling a bit frazzled, actually. I wouldn't mind a little rest, a little kip for four, five, six, seven hours, just to just to get my head back in. Because out of game, he's he's burning the PowerPoint on the pearl now. So if he runs into anything else, he's going to kill that. And I, well, I'd rather keep the pearls back for. Oh shit, my arm's been chopped off. Oh, good, we can use exactly. it back on again. Yeah. No, that's yeah, no mind. silk nods. Okay, so Jerry, you've got a number of choices. Jerry could use a little bit of healing stage so you yeah. can close this door and you remember you've got a formidable pit in front of you as well um or you could move back to the other chain up back to the other level of the dungeon to rest what do you want to do it looks like you need to rest up for four or five hours get something to eat and obviously a number of you need some minor healing yeah. I'd almost say let's go back to this uh, this doorway over here. Um, I'm, I, I think we're actually quite safe here. Jerry I, might rig up a um, like a, a 
and and a trap behind the door just in case someone comes through. It's like, so in front of the pit, she wants to do trap building and just yeah. do a tripping trap style thing. So just like a a a, a length of rope at like ankle height, just right in front of the pit. Okay. So if someone comes through, they trip and fall into the pit. But it, she's also going to put um uh see some be a noisemaker. So kind of when she walks uh fast, you hear a swishing like rain. So she can pull off some of her beads from her dress. Now I've not I've never tried trap building before, and I'm not really big on it. But we'll see how we go. Yeah. Um, so. Basically, you'd make a trap building roll. And yes. That would both indicate what damage or the effects of your of your trap. It also gives me a target to beat with any perception roll. Right, yo. Uh, there we go. Alternatively, there's also that small chamber right next to the one you're in. That's also yeah. a pool room, but the pool is dried up. The, excuse me. The wards on that door are also intact. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, oh, I'm, well, let's. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. What cool. do you reckon? So you could rest up in there, uh, get the benefit of the trap that um, Cherry has just made. The only thing you haven't got is the benefit of pit. We've got a cran. You yeah. have got a cran. Let, let's re let's rest up there and dish, dish out some herbage. Okay. Mm. Right. Okay, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take two rook. To well, hang on, Bosco. I've got myself. stuff here to give you. So, uh, right. what should you do? So, should you do some thorough for us? Because that's a brew. Um, so that's uh, how about taking ten thorough? So that's ten d four to start off with. Okay. Just because the brews will four. the brews will run out anyway, so I might as well use those. Twenty eight. So that's eleven still to Good go. Start. So uh, odds are four, four, two, four, eight, five. Six. So how about another uh, five? Okay. Yeah, okay, so twenty eight, three, forty three. Is you're you're good. Okay, so does that mean I need to take fifteen? Oh, Chris, never thought about that. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I forgot yeah. all about that. I, oh, I know. Five is that a fail? Four, no. four is a fail. No, oh, there you go. Oh, shit, but you still have to roll again anyway because you can still be positive. What's your con? Yeah, the low rolls suck for one to four. That'll make you negative. Yeah, I didn't realize about that. So. You're now addicted to Thurl. Yay! Two silver pieces, so it's not hardly a, a bad one. And yeah, how, that's not bad. Matt, how do you kick an Let addiction? Just... How do you kick addiction? You can go through withdrawal symptoms, and it, it's negative, negative, negative until you get to the end. Uh, usually we just have characters out of game time kind of thing, kick it. They were out of commission. All right, fine. So it's not... So, so what... if I take a week off, I can... Huh. Yeah, so what, what I'll... Addicted. What I'll do, Bosco, is I'll keep that thorough back just so that if you if you start flagging, I can just give you a little thorough. Yeah. Okay, so basically the addiction for both you and Cran, you just have to take some every day and you'll be fine. I think both of them are so cheap that um, it's not really going to affect you. Yeah, so let's give Cran some uh, two rook. So whoever wants to roll for that, that's uh, 2d20, so that's 4d10. Thank you, sir. I'll even change to his, his colour. Fighting salmon. Fighting <laughs> salmon, baby. I think we like fighting salmon. Oh, me. So what's he got? Thirteen left. So let's give him one more rook. Well, he'll even just resting will heal him that much. Okay. Yeah, because you you get some hit points, I think, just from resting. Okay, so you can rest overnight or overnight. You can rest up. Some of you doze fitfully. Some of you eat. Um, some of you. I'm practicing the katana as soon as I finish resting. I'm just like swishing swords around people's heads, going, Come here, come here and be my target dummy. <laughs> so you can open the door. You're, there are another out, one of which has already been battered down, opens or reveals some steps that lead down to what looks like an alcove, a shadowed alcove, and a passageway beyond, which Ugnanin makes her. Beeline for. Though okay. slightly, slightly behind Numel. I'll, I'll go up and head around the... Okay, with a torch or something, I assume? Yeah, I have the lantern. Okay. You can see that the doors lead, or the steps 
lead down into what looks like a shadowy set of alcoves. Uh, beyond them, more steps, another set of alcoves, and then a door which looks like it has been battered open. And you see what looks like a large open chamber. Cherry, you'll quite boldly step forward into this chamber. Jerry, and you can careful. see what looks like a stained and faded floor. Water is beginning to seep up from the jungle beneath through cracked flagstones. There are a number of large stone sarcophagi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten stone sarcophagi in total. Four of which um, have lids which have been toppled to the floor and are now open. That leaves six sarcophagi standing against the wall whose lids are intact. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm tempted to set this <laughs> set this room on fire, but um... sadly, there's nothing to burn. Uh, the yeah, I mean, I stone. The no, floor, no, I mean like the floor is damp. We open we open the sarcophagi and just fire straight in, <laughs> destroying whatever could be there. So Cran follows you and kind of gives you nudge in the back. Go on then, I'm right behind you. Yeah, that's okay. true. He's usually walking I'll, into the damn room. I'll go in and I want to first. I want to like have a just quick look for traps around. See if anything untowards more than the tenants okay. who were previously yeah, here. Fine. Uh, you freeze as the floor just shifts. Some of the flagstones just shift underneath your feet. Ooh. You can hear a, a faint. Uh, noise as if a piano wire is just snapped, and you can see one of the open sarcophagi shift slightly, rocked in place. It's just locked in place, rocked. Rock. So the actual sarcophagus I seems am. to rock slightly from left to right. Um, give me an intelligence roll, Cherry. Uh, one of my greatest, one of your many skills, indeed. Mm. <laughs> Hmm, you think tactically is, I'm not bad. This is suspicious. Okay, so I I say Cran, did you see that? Cran, give me a perception roll, please. So Cherry is just thinks that she's just detected a trap. And she thinks one of the sarcophagi rocked from left to right. Nah, rock <laughs> Oh chance you're imagining it, sweetheart. Come on. So I'm gonna beeline for the for the one that just rocked, that I perceive rock, which is that one across the hall from me or next to me, or okay. Do you want to move yourself to where you where you want to go? Yeah, I think it's that one, isn't it? That... Okay. As you walk across the floor, there are a series of pinging noises, and various sarcophagi around the room from left to right. Um, can you? Give me, can both Cran and Cherry give me initiative rolls, please? Oopsies. Oh, good job, Cran. As soon as I hear, can I beeline back to the stairwell and say, let's hold the stairs and get everyone in? Okay, some of the lids begin to crack open and you can see more mummies Oops. begin to step out of the sarcophagi. Bloody girl, let's get out of here. Oh my God. Oops. Six, in fact. Actually, Cherry, you you stay here. I'll be right back. You said this is fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, Silk should be uh, can, Sorry, can everybody give me a nickname apart from, that is to say, Katilk, um, Shana, Numo, and uh, Ugnan. Can you now follow up with initiative roles, please? So they would be shouting, going, oh, my God, what have you done? Um, help, help, help. Or, ah, more cannon fodder, more axe fodder. Okay. Um, Silk, I'm going to skip you. I'm yeah, she can't hear them. To mummy number one. Not good. Crab, oh. your turn. There are six mummies in the room. They're beginning to move and react to your presence. If you are quick, you might be able to run out of the room if anything untoward happens. Oh. They're certainly moving around. Cherry, unfortunately, is on the far side of the room. 
and looks as if she could get trapped and cut off. Yeah, I don't know if Cran would turn tail and run if there's a party member there. So he's going to take to the stairs here five feet, and yeah. uh, he'll he'll chop and yell at Cherry to get out of there. He'll take out Mummy 3 to give a clearer path for Cherry to get out of there. Okay, okay come on, baby. Um, just straight on attack here and yeah. hope for the best. Oh, it was 90-something and then 40. Okay those hideous bonuses though that is still 31 uh points of damage so the axe crashes into the creature that seems somewhat oblivious of your presence um let me just call up uh so it's going to be a c slash critical when i've got tables uh okay give me a c slash please okay big uh 74 74 isn't bad that will take it across the shoulder and upper hip, spins it round. Um, another seven hit points of damage. Uh, unfortunately, it's not stunned, but it is knocked off its, um, just knocked away slightly and reels away. Uh, okay. Numel, you can see what's happening, so you can respond if you wish. Yeah, um, I think Numel panics probably a little bit. I uh, don't think she's got anything that can really help. Sorry, he hasn't got anything that can really help. So, uh, just, I didn't know what kind of weapon he had out. So, uh, if he hasn't got the short bow, draws a short bow and tries to take a plink at anything he can see. So, mummy number one, I think, going down those steps. You can just about see mummy number one. Okay, shoots. <laughs> and it misses. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, mummy number four will come towards you, but won't attack this round. Shana, it's your turn. Now, Shana's quite quick. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say she might kick in her adrenal speed. But she's quite some way back. Yeah, I know. Some that's adrenal what... speed takes time as well. Oh, does it? This is where I lack skills and knowledge. Yeah, I think it's like 20% of her action to do speed. So you just need to make a successful... Uh, Moving maneuver. Is that yeah. right? No, or it's a static maneuver. It's a static maneuver. So you just, right, just basically roll the dice for it, yeah. Yeah. It'll so call up a column it. for yep, that's the fine. GM. Yeah, get over 100 and that's it. Okay. Oh, you can get rid of her stun too. Who's stunned? Yeah. Was that Shana? Yeah, she's still stunned. Oh, that's right. Yeah, let me get rid of those. There you go. Shouldn't. There you go. So, Shana, you can move twice your uh, speed, or twice your distance. You. So, put under MM percentage on the combat tracker. Put two hundred percent, and then you can start doing doing that. Okay, maximum one hundred and sixty-five. So nice. Are we gonna hold? This bottom of yeah, the stairs exactly. or the top of the stairs. Hold them, <laughs> hold them somewhere, choke choke point. Yeah, yeah. So I'm thinking if we take the stairs and make a, a, a gateway for, for Cherry, Cherry to run. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so so I've still got 33%. Oh, uh, no, that was 33% activity. Use plus 20, so that's 50-something. So um, she won't. Do anything else for them. Okay. Okay. Yeah, holding that area is. Yeah. Okay. Uglin uh, goes. Don't fight this, Cherry. And he shoots his uh, shield forward, and then uses the inbuilt ability as the as it swirls at the front, and then suddenly punches it towards his chest, and uses the leaving thing on Cherry, which should push him right towards him, so he doesn't fumble. Okay. Oh no! Not oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. So cherry, to... cherry to here. With the leaving, Ooh, and that's the I end feel of this turn. <laughs> I've never used leaving like that. Someone's me. Uh, that's my right. use, actually. Yeah, basically, you're not allowed to do it. Anybody who's unwilling. Yeah, that's right. No, that's fine. Damn, that was clever, Cherry. I look around, surprised, going, "Oh, hello. how did I get here? Just don't puke." <laughs> <laughs> All right, too late. Sorry about your boots. Okay, so 
she's going to grab her bow and move forward top of the stairs or mid midway on the stairs here as a second yeah. second range um and let's take a shot at mummy number three top this or 80. oh that's nice so the arrow flies through the air and strikes home uh so that's mummy number three that's yep. um eight points but no critical i'm afraid yeah, the arrow beds itself in the creature's sort of shoulder, uh, but it just snaps the shaft off and hisses. Mummy number five, therefore, come across the floor like that. And then we're at Silk. Okay, Silk shakes out of her reverie oh, did and really moves. Get, did you really get an initiative of one? I put myself at one after you bypassed me. I figured oh, all the right, noise okay, would go yes. for... Yeah, okay, that's fine. I was just going to say, I've never heard... Her. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> only when I want to go at a one. <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's I was going to say it's canon. She's now capable of doing a one initiative. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like walking slow motion, moonwalking. Um, but yeah, she'll move her three squares, uh, and then she'll start casting firewall, not ball, okay. but wall. Done. Okay, so you're preparing your spell. Okay. Damn, yeah. somebody's got to know this do shuddy thing. Mm. Is that a new spell? It's what, technically old, but she's been concentrating on bold spells the whole time. Okay. Oh, all right. And that's where we'll leave this episode for this time. Next episode, we'll continue on that fight, and we'll be joined with a number of other players who are missing in this session. You can find the usual bollocks in the description of how to get in contact with us and what other media outlets and sources that we use for our actual plays, for podcasts, etc. Okay, take care. See you next time. Bye-bye.